A-R-E podcast episode number 57. Welcome to the Welcome to the A-R-E podcast. A-R-E podcast. Where it's all about encouraging and inspiring you today so you can fulfill your dream of becoming a licensed architect tomorrow. And now your host, David Doucette. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the ARE podcast. We have another micro podcast topic for you today where we keep our topics under 15 minutes. And Eric and I have been very good about that. And uh, as always, joined by our co-host, Eric Corey Freed. Eric, how are you? I'm well. Hi, everybody. How are you? And today we're going to talk about what your investment is worth. Uh, And we're going to talk in, I guess, maybe financial terms, but but maybe there's a mental component to this as well. So what is the investment worth? Uh, How do we want to start that one, Eric? Well, this this idea really started with uh, a beloved member of our coaching, our group coaching cohort, who is, let's say, very stubborn. And, you know, like a lot of people do, she was frustrated. She had been taking so many tests and she had been failing and she was just starting to see, you know, the coaching was just starting to help her kind of get through it, but she's, she was admittedly burnt out and understandably so. And I tried different ways to motivate her of like, come on, you're, you're starting to see your scores go up. Things are starting to change, like stick, you know, stick with it. You'll be finished. And finally, the, the only thing that really, really got her to, um, to like perk up again was out of desperation. I asked her, how much do you think you've spent so far with, tests that you failed with study materials with time off work what was what do you think your total investment's been so far and she was like i don't know like ten thousand dollars at least and i said okay are you going to walk away from a ten thousand dollar investment because if you do that now then that's money wasted and that's what perked her up that's what like oh hell no i'm not doing that (laughs) and that seemed to reinvigorate her her drive to finish these things like let's get let's get some value out of this ten thousand dollar investment yeah and i think it's very applicable and obviously we're not even figuring in the cost of architecture school or whatever you know school we went to to get to this point but just the test taking process it is an investment and i think sometimes we lose sight of that we we're so focused on the carrot dangling in front of us the 235 bucks or whatever it is that oh man, I have to pass this next test. Otherwise, I need to spend another $235. So what? $235, like it's a lot of money. I don't want to minimize it. But what we're talking about in getting your license, a state is going to grant you your license to practice architecture. Let's be real. $235 is a drop in the bucket. Again, I don't want to minimize it, but let's put this into perspective. And I think to your point, Eric, Many of us have invented, invested thousands of dollars um, not e- on top of our education in trying to prepare and get through and end carb fees and all that stuff. But I'll tell you what, once you're through it, you don't necessarily look back and calculate your spend or you don't look back on the extra three tests you had to take and, oh man, I wasted another 800 bucks. Once you pass, it doesn't matter. And all of this is just it's the goal to get you there. Nobody's wasting money in this process to achieve your your license. It just it's not. Um, so one of the things uh, that Eric and I have been talking about, and we've been doing this with our platinum coaching, is just budgeting for the next year ten exams. The cost of ten exams is two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars or thereabouts, depending on costs go up, but it's 235 as, as we're recording this times 10. You just budget 2,400 bucks for the next year, take 10 exams. And at the end of the year, just see where the chips fall, where they may. And you might have five done. You might have four done, you know, four passed, five passed, but you're that much closer to getting your license than if you kind of did nothing and, and worried about it, you know, one drop at a time. And the other, the other thing that that really serves is it sets this mental bar in your head of, you know what, I'm spending this money. I'm spending this twenty three fifty, this twenty four hundred bucks. If I can pass the test in six, you know, one, you know, each on the first try, great. Then I'll, you know, I'll take that extra money and I'll, um, I'll buy myself an iPad or something. But if I'm mentally preparing that I'm going to do 10, 
10 attempts, right? Uh, that's basically passing all six plus four retakes. And that's a good mental place to be. If I've set that bar in my head, then I'm not going to put all that pressure on myself each time. Like, oh my God, I have to pass or I'm going to lose out on 235 bucks. It's incredible to me how much pressure the candidates put on themselves, which ironically is part of the reason why they fail. They go in so worried about if I blow this, it's another 235 bucks that I got to give to NCARB. And in, in doing so, <clears throat> in doing so, ironically, cause them to fail and they have to do it anyway. And uh, so the mental bar of I'm going to budget 2400 bucks, that's $200 a month. I can save $200 a month just by not drinking or going to Starbucks, basically. Uh, you know, uh, suddenly this becomes very doable. It's clear in your head and you won't put that like day to day, just annoying pressure of I have to pass this to not lose the money. Exactly. And you won't play the desperation card. You won't be desperate. Um, rarely things come to desperate people, right? When we get desperate, it's just a mental mind game. And, you know, we're about to be licensed professionals. We all we already are professionals in the architecture space. So let's act like it, right? Um, let's not put so much weight on the $235 this next exam is costing me. It's just, it's part of the price of admission to get your license. And, and if, if you worry about each 235 bucks you spent, it will affect your test. And as Eric, you talk to those people all the time, it does uh, affect your mental, um, capacity or your mental, I don't know, somewhere <laughs> your mental brain to sort of focus on the exam and focus on the questions and the clue words and all that stuff we teach in coaching. If you're distracted by, Oh man, I failed again. NCARB just wants another 235 bucks for me. NCARB is just trying to get more money out of me. If that's your mindset, you're going to have a very difficult time uh, with this exam. Yeah, it's there's so many people um, that come come to me on the on the calls with, man, NCARB is just out to get their my 235 bucks. We tell people this on the coaching all the time. They don't care about your 235 bucks. What they want is they want you to become licensed so they can get your $3,000 a year in fees for an NCARB certificate. That's what they're really, I mean, you know, uh, the, the guys administering the test at NCARB, we've, we've worked very closely with them. They are, they generally are coming from a place of, we want people to pass. We just need to test them. That is their sincere judgment. They're, they are nice. They're nerdy, but they're nice people. <laughs> and they're not worried. They're not, Concern, they're not trying to get your stupid 235 bucks there. Um, they just want to make sure that they're doing their job and making sure that everybody who's becoming licensed is qualified to do so. And with NCARB, you already establish your council record, right? When you when you set up this process to the exam, once you get licensed, I forget exactly what the council, I mean, to maintain your council record every year, 300 bucks. I don't know. Don't quote me Something on like it. That. But, uh, you know, when, when Eric is facetiously talking about the 3000 a year, it's when you go to get reciprocity in other states, NCARB will send your record to that state. And that's that's where the money, I mean, it might be four or 500 bucks per record, depending on where you're sending it and the state requirements and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, the NCARB is not after your 235 bucks. And, you know, at this point, I mean, we've been doing this for years. Like, grow up. If you're mad about $235 and I don't know what to tell you. And I, you know, I'm sympathetic and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, be a jerk, but let's be real. You, you're going to be a licensed architect, much like uh, a doctor, you know, much like an attorney. You are a licensed professional. Act like it and stop belly aching about the $235, except that you're going to spend 2300 bucks over the next year on 10 exams and then just see where the chips you know fall at the end of the the 10 exams but it's also i think it's also good in your mind to think of it as an investment you're investing in yourself yes and in in, in talking to these candidates so many of them i i don't think they think of it that way in part because i don't think they think of themselves as being worthy of investing in themselves you know they'll buy gifts for their friends uh, or their family it's you know and that but but they're almost um they're almost uh, timid about wanting to make this investment in themselves and better themselves. And and you have to realize you've come this far. You've gone through architecture school. You've gone through AXP. You've probably worked for great bosses and crappy bosses. You've you've done all that. You've picked up red lines. You've had smeared ink on your hand for, 
for for years like you know this is an investment in you and it's one last final hurdle and you're much closer than you realize uh, you know we have so many people that that contact us who you know i tried to pass ppd on my own and i've taken it five times now well what is that five times 235 is uh you know 1100 uh, 1200 bucks right so they've spent 1200 bucks trying to do ppd with no study materials no help and they said is your you know i'm thinking about taking your coaching and i said i wish you contacted us sooner because you could have saved that 1200 bucks right so see it as an investment in your professional career it's worth it and as david said you know, a year from now, you're never going to real. You know, you're not going to be talking to people about. Yeah, it took me six attempts to to pass whatever. That that's not the way it works. You're, you'll just be done, and you'll be happy, and <laughs> and you can focus on 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 moving on. Yes, in terms of the investing in yourself, I guess that's at the end of the day, that's what all of this is. And I think that's that's what I mean when I say stop belly aching about the two hundred thirty five bucks. Bigger picture, as you said, Eric invest in yourself and feel good about it and give your permission to yourself permission to do that and give yourself permission to spend $235 on your next exam and not pass it. That's okay. It's part of the process. Um, stop worrying about the cost of one exam. As we said, you know, set a couple grand aside for the next year, but it's an investment in yourself and you're at the last mile of a 26 mile marathon. And I think, think sometimes it doesn't feel like that. You think you're like you're stuck. Uh, but if you stop and see how far you came, whether it's architecture school or years of qualifying experience or both or whatever it is, this little last mile is not nearly a big, as big a deal as, as it seems. And I know if we're in it, it's like, okay, well, David, you're wrong because I'm in it right now. But you have to step back and be like, Oh shit. Yeah. I'm really close. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put in the financial investment, you know, aside to just finish this and, and clear my mind of, of all this chatter, right? That's kind of what we're trying to do too, is just get rid of the chatter because it doesn't help. The chatter does not help. And remember, it's the last mile of the marathon. That's the hardest. The first mile of the marathon, you're just starting. You just woke up. You had a good breakfast, right? You're you're doing it. It's the last mile of the marathon where you've got blisters on your feet and sore nipples and um, you know probably chapped chapped ears and you know all that stuff. And uh, it's the one that you're feeling it the most. But you're really close. We have so many candidates that you know I don't think they they realize. You know they get a score report that has twos and threes on it, and we keep reminding them you're you know you're probably ten questions away from passing. You know another attempt with a better, better judgment mindset and you can pass this. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort here. Just do it. Yeah. And we, we cover that. Um, I think in other podcasts and coaching those twos and threes, which is what many score reports are. Um, it's so close. And, and I know we've had candidates become so defeated from two twos and three threes or three twos and two threes or whatever it is without realizing how close that actually is. Um, and it just takes time. It's a process to, to get through this. One thing I'll say uh, about Eric's uh, marathon analogy, because he uses them all the time. I just, all the time. Just for the record, Eric's never run a marathon. Now, I can't even spell marathon, really. <laughs> now, I've run three, just for the record, and it was been a few years. But just I just want to put that out there because you love to use that marathon analogy. <laughs> I meant more of an intellectual marathon, but yes, you, you've run three, as we all know. Um, all right, I think we're just about to approach 15 minutes, so we're, gonna, uh, we're approaching the cap of the uh, micro podcast. So... On behalf of Eric, my name is David, and we will see you guys on the next ARE Podcast. Thanks for listening to the ARE Podcast. Be sure to visit architectexamprep.com and check out our other podcast episodes, video tips, and the ARE blog. Remember to plan, practice, and pass.